All right, what is going on, everyone? And welcome back to more Black Desert. So today, I wanted to talk about the new crystals that came with the Land of the Morning Light region, and are they worth it? So what I'm going to do is we're going to look at all the new crystals that came out. I'll show you the stats and everything, give you my thoughts and opinions. And then after that, I'm going to show you like all the crystal setups that I have. And because we have two new slots, um, I think some things might be more interesting to change and look at. So yeah, let's start off with the crystals because some of them are actually w worth looking into and or trying to get if you can. So it also depends on what you're doing in the game. So like, are you a PvE -er? Uh Do you PvP a lot? Do you life skill? Um, how do you build your character? Are you more of a defensive player? Or a glass cannon DK like I am. And so that's a lot of things to look at. So let's start off with the offensive ones, the attack crystals. The two new ones that came out are... Um, one, the Crystal of Mysterious Darkness. And that one is mostly more for back attack damage. And I see a lot of people doing the boss rush or the boss blitz. And they have a lot of back attack damage stacked. And I think this is a very situational one because um, obviously some bosses are stationary and then some are uh, more mobile. So I do think that for classes who generally do a lot of back attacks more often, it's overall better. But I think for the general uh, player and just overall, critical damage is a lot more valuable than just a very specific um, back attack one. But I do see a lot of people using this for specific boss blitz ones. I don't think it's a bad one, but I don't think it's like the greatest one you can get. The next one we have is the Crystal of Brutal Decimation. Um, this is more for PvE, in my opinion, so grinding. So you get the extra AP against monsters, always good. And then you get 1% back attack damage, which is a little strange to me, but I think... If it were my choice, I would have just added 1% crit damage, and then I think that's just overall better. But overall, there are some people hard stacking back attack for bosses, and I think that's fine. Um, I believe that is actually it for the offensive ones. The defensive ones are the Crystal of Frozen Bitterness, and it is actually a lot of DR evasion and monster reduction. So I think this is a very good uh, defensive one. If you can get it from the boss blitz rewards, it's probably worth getting. Now keep in mind, this is considered a bitterness crystal and you can have two of these. So I think that's definitely worth getting. So this might be one of them that you wanna look into. And let me see, is there another one that came out with the region? I thought I saw one, but maybe it's in another category. So, I guess we'll do this one for now. Functional crystals, life skillers. This is a very good update for you guys. Um, so basically what all these crystals do is for every life skill, you could either get extra mastery and or whatever you want. And here's the catch thing. There's no limit to how many crystals you can have in here. So for all of you who have had a life skill preset before, Back in the day, I'd assume most of you guys just use max energy if you were gatherers, and then you used an extra 3% XP or whatever life skill you're doing, and then weight and uh, durability resistance. Nowadays, if you are lucky enough, you can just straight up stack mastery, and we calculated that to be about 160 extra mastery, assuming you can get all the crystals and just put them all in. And that's actually a lot. For the price it costs right now, that's probably maybe like 5 billion. And then assuming they're all max, it's probably like 10 or something. So to give you an idea of how valuable these crystals are, if you look at a Tet Monos, which is more or less the golden standard, Tri or Tet these days are where most people are at. One Tet would be 90 mastery and that's 30 billion silver. Now... If you can just get the extra 160 from just having crystals, what that allows you to do is basically you don't even need pen, um, pen monos anymore, which is good because most people don't have them. And 
it allows you to go down into like try and tet range which is more i guess they're making it easier for people to hit the 2000 mastery bracket which i think is overall good and so overall that allows you to push levels more often which is making it so that your life skill levels are in general uh, more valuable because every time you get a level past a certain point it gives you five permanent mastery and i think that's really good so yeah the way you can check yours is basically um check your mastery make sure to be full buffed and everything have your life skill gear and everything so for gathering for me i can hit like around 18 1900 relatively easy without anything now i would be able to do like 2000 mastery gathering and it especially helps uh i think the most valuable life skill crystals are going to be mastery for cooking gathering um maybe alchemy but generally the stuff that uh people do more often than others are pretty good so i think gathering is going to be a high priority though you know like i think with the gathering tools these days most people can hit 2000 uh relatively easier than it was before and so uh hunting is also going to be a good one cooking definitely going to be a high priority for people just because imperial deliveries are a very common thing now so that means that i guess you just straight up just get more money more silver every day um by doing imperial turn-ins um those are i think mostly the going to be the high priority ones you could also get xp which is also good but i think that it's really tough to say whether you're going for mastery versus xp um obviously if we're talking about late game and you're already hitting the 2000 bracket then you want to switch to xp because then more permanent and then you can like downgrade your gear slowly but surely so i think as an earlier player uh gathering or not gathering but life skill xp is valuable and then as you get to a later one when it's starting to push like 30 billion per tet monos jewelry piece then you might want to start looking into the mastery crystals but this was a huge update for everyone um you no longer really need pen monos not that many people ever had it but it makes it a lot easier to hit brackets which is a good thing i think that's one of the huge things they did for life skillings and now it's on a now it's like on the right direction all they have to do is actually buff some life skills to make it more or less competitive with others and so i think that's good um everyone knows it but in case pearl abyss you don't know what life skills are busted and or need some tweaking I think bartering could be raised a little bit. I think bartering is fine, but it could be raised a little bit in terms of silver value. Um, to be honest, I don't really even understand what sailing mastery does. It's like you just make your boat faster, whatever. Sure. Um, after you hit farming master one, there's kind of like no point to actually push it further. To be honest, all people do is get to buy products and then turn those in for either contribution and or uh, silver. So I think after Master 1, you turn your farms into the old moon ones, which just makes it smaller so you can have more of them in one area and have it condensed. But realistically, farming is not a profitable life skill. It's you get it because you need the materials or something. So like if you're going for tier 9 horses, uh, tier 10 stuff in general um that's basically why you're farming but <laughs> it's not really profitable trading as we all know is probably the most dead life skill i've seen back in the day it used to be okay um but nowadays i think it just really straight up needs a buff and the way it works is it's kind of like bartering but on land you take a material from the vendor from point a to b but then you're doing it for maybe like 30 mil an hour which in 2023 is not good but back in the day like five years ago it was pretty decent so that's one of those things they just have to rework and it's not even like rework the system it's just raise the value of the materials and everything so you can make it a little bit more competitive and even if you don't want to make it as much as grinding for the effort 
Just make it as much as like alchemy, cooking, or gathering. Something with comparative to another life skill. And I think people would be happy with that. Uh, training is fine. All of these are, you know, pretty decent. So you use one of them to get into the other. So that's just my opinion of what crystal or what life skills would be good for various crystals. And let's get into the good old the meat of the new crystals. So we're going to break this down into like tier one. Tier 2 and Tier 3. Tier 3 being the highest one. So we're going to look at these for a second. These these three ones that look like small diamonds. These are going to be considered Tier 1 crystals. And the stats are pretty decent. I personally have a purple one because I just got lucky and got it. Um, but you need three of these crystals to combine into a Tier 2, which is these things. And then you need three of the Tier 2s to combine into a Tier 3. And that's how you get the big big stat crystals so basically the way you get them is by doing the boss splits and just do your weekly resets and then maybe you'll get lucky i've had my opinions on the whole boss blitz video thingy you can watch that if you want to hear my opinions on everything but um so the red one is more your offensive crystals right and then purple is more defensive and then the yellow is more like PvE grinding. So just to give you a small idea. Um, ideally, in the end, you can only wear one of them. But which one do I think is the best? Obviously, it depends on what you do. because, Or just get one of each if you can. But I think that if I were to use one as an overall, I would probably use the red one. Because that just seems like it's the more offensive. And it seems really good. And here's the catch with the different ones. The yellow one, it gives 10% item drop rate. That's huge. And if you grind a lot, 10% drop rate, that's a lot. Um, but yeah, that's about it for this one. The defensive one, I actually think is really good as well. It doesn't give any drop rate, but it does give a lot of defensive stats to the point for, of when people build defensive classes like Shies and everything. Uh, just the amount of stats you get on this is very solid. But for more offensive classes, I think this is fine. I personally think that if you were going to use this, it has an item drop rate of 5% on the offensive one, which I think is fine. I think they should just add it to the purple one as well. Like, 5% is 5%. So... It doesn't really matter. I understand how 10% on the actual one for grinding is a good deal. But, I mean, it's like, it's 5%. Just add it to the purple one and it's fine. But, yeah, just depends on what you're doing. And that's how you get them. So, we also have the new ultimate um, crystals. So, like, you know, the Hooms, the Makalods, and the Gervish ones. Now we can, we have the Han ones, which are the tier twos. And then now we have the ultimate, which is the best in slot one. So if we look at them, let's look at the Hans. This is what people are, were previously using. So the effects of the two and the four piece are the same. But what you're going to look at is the individual stats for each crystal. So for example, the ones that we've been using, two accuracy, 1% resistance, 30 HP. And now if we look at the ultimate one, it's uh, a lot more of all those stats. So generally, there's a new best in slot. And the way you get them is by combining... Well, I guess the hardest thing to get would be the Crystal of Harmony. And the way you get that is by doing turn-ins for various things. So you can get them, one, by doing boss splits, obviously, new region. But you can get these Crystal of Harmonies by just doing various things. Or you can, you know, I think there's a chance of you being able to get it off a node, but it's very low. And so you just combine your Hoom or whatever crystal, green, red, blue, into the new one plus a lot of other materials so if you were using hooms in the past i think it's a good time to upgrade um you can get one from doing the adventure journals i believe so just do that and it's a guaranteed you can get the second one from i believe uh turning in these coins to a vendor and there's a chance of you getting another one i believe so you can get two guaranteed 
And then after that, I believe it's just RNG, whether you get it from a boss or from a node. And so, yeah, that's how you get those. And then the forest crystal right here. Um, I believe you can get this from an adventure journal. I don't remember which one, but if you're looking for those mastery life skill crystals that we were talking about earlier, uh, that's how you get it. You combine this with the one you want and you talk to an NPC and that's how you get it. So, yeah, overall, it's uh, a lot of good crystals. And so now you're probably wondering, all right, so what are the crystals we have? So you get two extra crystal slots at the bottom. And how do you get them? You just do the story and that's it. You just land in a morning light. You get two new crystal slots. That's amazing. So this is the part where we talk about what I use for PVE, PVP, and life skilling and everything when I get them. So, this is my PVX crystal setup. Uh, what does that mean? Um, so, like, let's say I'm grinding and I want to defend myself when I'm, like, duel for spot, whatever. This is what I would use. Um, so, we have the special evasions. The This is more for grinding, but you have accuracy on here as well. Some places you grind, you don't really need accuracy. So, but you do when you're fighting other people. So, that's why it's called the PVX for both grinding and... Uh, being able to defend yourself against other players. And then with the two new crystal slots, we have the tier one defensive, because that's what I got. And I was lucky enough to be able to get one of these from a boss drop. So we made one of the crystal of frozen bitterness, which is more defensive stats, which is really nice. And so in the middle, we have the Valor. That's cool. And then these are Adamantines, which are uh, knockdown, bound, resist, and all the stuff. So that works for me. These two are very situational if you are a high mobility class you could probably get away with using something else but here's my pvp setup um the difference is we have damage to humans which is good uh, more damage to humans and i think that's really what changed compared to these two so we have monster damage versus human damage um pve this is strictly for grinding um, if I'm doing like an hour in the Marnie realm and I know I'm uninterrupted, um, this is what would change. So more AP, always good. Um, this is a little special one because usually you would just use the purple glorious crystals for monster damage. And I'm at the point in the game where my AP is good enough where I can meet most of the monster cap zones. So I do value the extra 1% attack and cast speed. So that is something I would, you know, definitely you could replace it if you are like a newer to mid tier player. But if you aren't, you know what you can do with these. Instead, you can add more survivability. Um, there are these crystals that I used to use. They are um, ancient magic crystals of flame, the more power. So it's basically five AP. It'll help you reach your next bracket of whatever monster zone you're grinding in or you could just get one of these which are the new crystals as well so i would personally recommend just getting the power crystals because it's five ap times two so then that'll just allow you to do more damage um so that's like the more budget option and then obviously with the two new crystals you could choose defensive or offensive ones i play a dk and wear glass cannons but i do want to have a little bit of survivability as well so that's why I chose this one, but this obviously is a primordial crystal, which is what we were talking about, the tier one, two, three crystals before. And then this one is a bitterness, so these are two different categories. So th obviously when I get the expensive four million tier three one, that'll replace this one. And then here you could just put more damage if you want to or not. Um, Life skill is very personal preference. What do you do? What do you like doing? If you like gathering, just get all the mastery or XP now that you can actually fill up the crystal slots. I think it's a very good deal. Um, so things I would recommend if you are a gatherer, though, uh, max energy is always a huge thing. So this is kind of irreplaceable. Um, so just having an extra 20 energy when you gather is pretty good. Um, durability reduction resistance. It was one of the few things that you would just add because you needed it before. Like nowadays, being able to repair your tool mid gather if you have a tent, very easy. Um, so these are kind of replaceable now. But uh, if you don't have all the crystals, this is definitely a good one to get. It's very cheap. 
But nowadays, I would definitely just start picking up mastery and or gathering, depending on where you're at in the game. Like uh, if you're high mastery and you just feel like you need, uh, you want to start pushing levels, get XP. If you're mid tier, I think mastery is generally the overall. And if you are just hard PVE XP pushing, um, eventually you just want more XP. So put more crystals in that give you XP and then you're good to go. So we will got to fix that later with 2D ones. And then here's the beginner one for the new players. So this is the setup that I've built for people who are new and or haven't really put too much thought into crystals. So before we talked about this, remember how we talked about the Jin special evasion? These crystals are like 700 mil each, which ultimately not that bad. But if you're a beginner, 700 mil means upgrades. And so what I would do here is get the magic crystal of special evasion. The difference is you don't get the extra 100 HP, but you want it because of special attack evasion, which means um, it's not actually the same as you might think. So the way it works is special evasion is not just avoiding the damage. It's avoiding the like back attack, crit damage and air attack, floating, all that kind of damage. That one is you're not getting the extra off of that. So you're just taking normal damage, basically. Um, over here, we have regular precision crystals, and it's 8 accuracy and 10 all resistance. And over here, we use the uh, L cars. And honestly, these days, L cars are very cheap to the point where I think this that's a better option to get. It's like 30 mil. It's no big deal. But... These are five mil, so if you're really on a strict budget, then these are just like the step down from it. Um, over here, I personally use two Harpia crystals because it'll it's one, it's cheap, it gives you some survivability, and it'll allow you to grind uh places with humans better and or defend your spot better. So these are very cheap budget crystals. And critical hit damage times ten or plus ten percent times two, always good. And the high high tier ones would be the corrupt crystals, which once again, these are also very cheap to the point where I would just recommend if you just want to do more damage, this is the way to go, corrupted. And so, yeah, that's not bad either. Uh, just keep in mind, you'll be taking a little bit more damage. So it's not a big deal, to be honest. But if you just want no negative sides with the crystals, the regular standard 10% always good. And then this is what we used before. Remember how we were talking about the ultimate uh, crystals now? Uh, this is what you would upgrade to the ultimates through time. And I purposefully didn't add crystals into the corner slots because, one, getting a Garmoth's heart is very difficult, and I understand that. So that's why we left it alone. But when you do get your Garmoth's heart, you would start adding the glorious crystals over here. So, like, these two things that give you, like, more attack cast speed and more damage so once you get them that's when you add those slots in the middle slot is a costume one so you have two options one crit rate or one movement speed stat and so that one both of them are personal preference just pick the one you want it doesn't really matter and with the new region just by doing the quest you get the two new crystal slots at the bottom and so if you think you need more ap grinding a spot uh just add those power crystals and if you are lower on the gear side, just add like a defensive crystal until you can get the rotation down. And then once you stop getting hit and you can grind a place more efficiently, then you swap to the offensive crystals. So this is the beginner setup. And then eventually from these three that you'd set before, you might want to start looking into upgrading your crystals later on. Um, but I think that's it. So that's what I use. PVX, PVP, PVE, life skilling. Uh, if I just want to grind for straight XP and here's my beginner setup. So yeah, hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. Um, keep in mind these crystals, I would say they were tailored towards Dark Knight, but this is what I use. Um, if you are a class with a grab, you could probably get one of those ignore grapple resist crystals. I heard those are pretty good. So I believe it's in the offensive one. So like ignore whatever stat or resistances i think these are very solid crystals as well these are more for the end game players but uh, i think these are very good as well so more for pvp but also very solid um if you are strictly a pvp -er, 
then let's get things with more human damage. And then that's the way to go. But yeah, that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you have a fantastic day. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to see you come back. And uh, every day we try to make a new video for people who are beginners, returning players, or people who are just getting better at the game in general. And um, yeah, hopefully you guys learned something and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching.